If you are not doing these 10 preventative maintenance tests at your Airbnb, you will drain your Airbnb savings account. If money isn't a motivator for you and maybe a big costly repairs doesn't motivate you, maybe being sued or having you know your house burned down or having a carbon monoxide situation because you weren't on top of your preventative maintenance will motivate you like it does me. Yes, she went there. Safety is absolutely first, but after that, it is the hospitality of your home. It's welcoming these guests. They are staying for a safe overnight stay, a warm overnight stay, and a house that is prepped and ready for each and every stay. So yes, it's time, it's money, it's safety, it's all the things, and it really goes back to that preventative maintenance. Hi, I'm Sarah Karakayan. And I'm Annette Grant. And together we are Thanks, Thanks for, for visiting. visiting. We've been hosting for well over a decade, welcomed tens of thousands of guests, and earned thousands of five-star reviews. Our portfolio continues to bring in over one and a half million year over year and supported not only by the industry's leading brands, but also some of the biggest media outlets. And we're here to help you with your furnished rental. Number one, change your HVAC filters. I wish I could give you a hard and fast rule on how often this needs to be done. But we say every one to three months because there are so many variables that are dependent on how often you need to change these. But the one thing I can tell you is it's super simple to check and please, do not be like me. One of my short-term rentals way, way, way back in the day, it was a property that I had taken over from someone else and I didn't have all of my checklists ready yet and my HVAC stopped working. It is never a call that you wanna get from your guest and that's why we're saying you need to do this preventative maintenance because it's such an easy check. My guest had to call me, the AC stopped working, it was the middle of summer, but luckily the guest was lovely and the husband actually was an HVAC expert and he he went in, he, they found it because it was an interesting place in this home, found it and when they pulled it out, it was disgusting. Luckily, I did have backups there. I don't know why I had the backups and didn't change it, but they switched it out for me, but it was number one, utterly embarrassing because it was disgusting and it's such an easy check. And then two, it was a lot of back and forth and phone calls that just didn't even need to be done if I would have prepared ahead of time. So put this on your regular maintenance and have, order them for the year so you have them there and ready. You don't wanna be you know, running around town trying to buy um, a filter. I don't think people truly realize it can truly stop the AC or heater from, from working. From working. Yes, absolutely. Like that, like, I think people think like a filter is like, oh, just this like nice thing to like, no, it's like you can change it and then it will start working again. It's if, imperative. If it's not yeah. a part of like a more a bigger mechanical issue, but it's imperative. Number two, HVAC coil cleaning. You want to clean the HVAC coils at least twice annually. You can have your HV uh, engineer do this for you, but you can also totally DIY this. But if you don't do it, Dirty coils can overwork the HVAC unit, and if it's overworked, it can stop working, and it, you know it's always gonna stop working when your guest is in house. <laughs> Number three, you're gonna test your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. These you're gonna wanna check at least twice yearly, but we actually test them before each and every stay because you might have that rare occasion that depending on the way that you have them wired in your house, uh, some are hard hardwired, some people still have old school, just the batteries, your guests can remove batteries. If you're doing battery only, those can be removed. If let's say they, they're they not familiar with your kitchen, they get a little, you know, it gets a little hotter or cooks faster than what they're used to. They might simply remove those batteries. So you wanna make sure that you are checking those on each and every stay. And also if you can have them hardwired, absolutely have them hardwired. But this is something that you definitely wanna put on your checklist and we cannot tell you how many hosts that we have talked to that same scenario oh my gosh a guest removed the batteries didn't tell us and they kind of get mad at the guests and it's like the guests probably like i said they had a cooking incident removed them it was time to check out they got busy didn't even think about it twice i don't think the guests probably had malicious intent about not telling them or maybe your smoke detectors were chirping and they were annoyed by them and they, they undid them. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're checking these um, at least twice a year, but on each and every stay. I think the importance there of checking them twice a year and don't even like just check them, change the replace, batteries. Yeah, replace the batteries. Twice a year, that way they don't chirp, mm -hmm. you know, cause you don't want the chirp to be what reminds you to change yes. the batteries. That's, you need to change, we need to change our mindset around that and be preventative against the chirp. 
You also want to make sure that you are uh, making sure that the smoke detectors are clear of any dust. You know, there's there's like a little grid there. That's like where the sensor is. If you take your vacuum to it, most most of the time you can reach it unless you have like crazy high ceilings. And make sure that remains clear and clean so that if debris or, or anything like that, um, you know, dander attracts to it, it's going to make it less sensitive to detecting smoke and whatnot. So making sure that that is clean and clear. And we have been recommended by safety experts in the short-term rental space. It is best to keep your smoke detectors and your CO detectors as separate units. Mm -hmm. So yes, they have the combo option, but to keep them separate is best. Also make sure you understand building codes and where you need to have smoke detectors and CO detectors by code so that you're compliant. If you're not sure, you can always call the local firehouse, call the city, make sure you understand not knowing or saying you didn't know won't be an excuse if you ever unfortunately have a fire or a CO scare in your short-term rental. And we can't tell you how many hosts we've encountered that have listened to our content or been on some of our coaching calls and like they've done a safety check of their house and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, they had the house rehabbed and maybe they didn't put the smoke detectors back in. Maybe they flipped a, a large like primary closet into an extra room or they've done, they've rehabbed basements or garages and they are not safe. They have no smoke detectors in them. So if this is a home that you have taken over or purchased, you really do need to do another thorough inspection yourself and make sure that there are smoke detectors where they need to be. Number four, drain and have your hot water heater inspected. Yearly, you wanna have your hot water tank drained because sediment can build up in it. And when sediment builds up, like we just discussed with the HVAC, it can not work properly and cause issues. And the last thing you want is a cold shower, okay? Your guest is not gonna be happy if the hot water heater isn't working. In addition to that, if your hot water tank is run by gas, you wanna make sure that you're getting that inspected by a licensed plumber, because if there is any sort of small leak within your hot water tank, there can be CO concerns there as well, which is why a lot of the time you have a detector, a CO detector near your hot water tank and making sure that all the gaskets and all the parts and pieces are the way they should be so that you don't have any sort of safety scares like CO leaks. Number five, your dryer vents and ducts. Pay attention here, dryers are very dangerous. I kind of chuckled there, not a laughing matter. I think people don't take the dryer vents and ducts as serious as they should. The Obviously the vents should be cleaned out every single time. Your cleaners are doing a lot of laundry in there. Maybe your guests are doing a lot of laundry in there. It is not top of mind for, especially for your guests to be cleaning that out. So that is on each and every use. But the thing that I see people so forgetting is the actual dryer vent duct that goes outside. I can't tell you again how many people have reached out to us like, oh my gosh, thank you, because it was backed up all the way to the dryer. Again, there's so much laundry being done there that you have no idea about. You can't keep tabs on it like your own home, but you want to get that cleaned out. You can do it, but we actually hire professionals to clean out our dryer vent ducts. Number six, inspect your window and door seals and weather stripping. Annually, before winter, no matter what winter means to you, it doesn't need to mean the absolute frigid temperatures, but it's just a nice reminder of when to check the weather stripping and all seals around your windows and doors because you wanna keep the heat in or you wanna keep the AC in, and these things do wear away with time. So it's a good reminder to just make sure that you're ahead of the game. If you need to replace weather stripping, it's actually quite easy to do. You could totally DIY it or hire a handy person to get that done. You also, at the same time, make sure your window locks are working properly at the same time because you want to keep energy costs down, but you also want to make sure that your guests are safe. Number seven, check and clean your sump pump. This is, of course, if it's applicable to you. If you have one, this is something that before rainy season, especially, you want to make sure that it's clear so you're not flooding. That is not fun for you and or your guest. No. So make sure you hire a professional to make sure that they are inspecting it, make sure it's working properly, it's cleared out, and that you're prepared for, like Annette said, your rainy season so you don't get floods in the basement. Number eight, clean your refrigerator coils and make sure the water filters are changed. Doing this preventative maintenance 
twice annually is a good rule of thumb because here's what ha will happen. Your guest will in purchase all this expensive food and they'll either put it into the fridge when they check in and notice the fridge is not working and call you or it'll be in the fridge. They'll be like day two or three of their stay and then all of a sudden the fridge doesn't work anymore and all their delicious food goes bad and guess whose fault it is or who's gonna hear about it? It's you. So if you stay on top of your fridge maintenance and make sure the coils are clean again, because you don't want to overwork your fridge and also the water filter, you want to make sure that's cleared out. Usually the water filter will let you know, but if you can get preventative and ahead of it, so your guest isn't telling you that needs to be changed, you're changing it just before it needs to be done. That shows them that you actually, they don't even have to think about it, right? Like you know that you're on top of your stuff because you are again being preventative. Number nine, inspect your deck and or patio need to do this annually. This is so important. Um, again, these are attached to your homes, maybe attached to your condo, uh, depending on if you're in a building or it's independent. Your guests are gonna be spending time out there and we're just gonna share, there are a lot of times decks and patios are built originally, probably not up to code, maybe not with a final inspection, done. We want to, I just want to share a story of, we know, um, someone inside our membership, she actually bought a condo with a concrete patio. And during her, and she was listening to one of our podcasts, had it inspected. And the structural engineer was like, absolutely not, no way, not even one person should be allowed on this patio. It is going to fall anytime. So she had to block, completely block her property to get that taken care of. Luckily she was part of an HOA and they could get it taken care of, but you will see story after story online about deck collapsing where groups are taking group photos or everyone in the party is actually out on the deck. So this is something that you need to know. However many guests um, your property welcomes, is it safe for all of them to be out on the deck at the same time? These are some of the most tragic stories that you see about Airbnb are deck and patio collapses. You do not want that to happen. So A, you want to get it inspected. B, even things that you can do, like you don't want there to be any loose nails around the deck or patio. If you have a hot tub on that deck or patio, you've got to make sure that no one can climb up and then have access to fall over the side. You really want to make sure that everything from the um, furniture to uh, hot tubs, anything like that, the, the weight is supported on the deck. So get someone else to help you make sure that it is ready to go for all of your guests. Number 10, check grout and caulking in all wet areas of your property. First of all, it is disgusting. I to say this is a cleanliness issue. <laughs> it is just gross when caulk has mold growing through it, on it, around it, around it. Grout <laughs> is falling out of your showers and there and it's getting behind the walls and who knows what's going on back there now that you've like penetrated behind the tile. And so then mold is obviously a safety issue. So it doesn't look great. It looks like you are not paying attention and it's also a health and safety concern. So checking it and knowing this, you cannot caulk over existing caulk. You have to remove it and then replace it with good stuff. Whenever someone tells me that they're gonna like renovate their kitchen or their bathroom, or they are gonna recalk something, or if I hire someone to recalk, I tell them the kind of material I want them to use. I don't want the cheap stuff. It's not for me, it's just about it being clean and white I and mean, that matters, but there's product out there that has guarantees for no molding, no cracking. And that's the kind of material you want to put in your spaces, essentially, especially because they're going to be so heavily used. So again, anywhere that's wet, so that's your shower, that's your kitchen. Maybe it's outside or on your pool or your hot. I mean, those need their own preventative maintenance checks. But if we're talking like big picture here, making sure your grout and your caulk is in top notch shape. I'm gonna share, there are some of these things I, I didn't know about, like I've learned about them. Once you know about them, it is not an excuse to not take care of these. You have to either hire it out and learn from them. I like to, you know, learn when the, when the person's there. Doing, I ask a lot of questions. I have no shame. I will ask any question about something that I do not understand. And I have no shame in also hiring it out and, and paying for a service because just not doing it is not an excuse. If it's something that you can't do, you must hire it out. This is for the safety of your guest. And also it's your, your, your asset. You put so much time and money into your property. Why are you not properly maintaining it? Yeah. It, 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 
Think of the house that you, yes, you, most of you got into this because of hospitality, you love taking care of guests, maybe you know how to make a space beautiful, you know how to create an experience, but now that you have this property and this home and this asset and this product, you need to know how to take care of that product. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, you don't have to DIY it, like Annette said, you can hire it out, but knowing what you need to hire out and when, and then keep track of it. So this is another big tip we can give you, whether you're using a software that helps you with the operational components of your hosting business, or maybe it's just a Google Calendar. If you had the HVAC checked on October 1st, make sure you note that and then schedule the next one out, right? So it's six months out or one year later. And when it's done, you know that it was done. Maybe you can make a note on that event. Like, hey, this was done by this company. Here's my confirmation or here's the receipt. Attach it to it. Like these are the kind of things that you do need to make sure that you can recall and report if goodness, I mean, if something were to happen and your insurance company asks you, well, what were you doing to make sure that this didn't happen? And you can say, no, I had ABC, HVAC company out on these dates. They told me I was good to go. I changed the filter. Here it is on my calendar that I had these filters changed like I was supposed, whatever that is, just having an accountability in that regard is going to be good for you. And it is so much better to be ahead of this, already have the relationship with the companies that are going to help you with these tasks. So when and if something um, happens and you need more of a, a quote unquote emergency service done, you're already in their system. They already know what your equipment is. You already have a relationship with them. You're going to be at that top level for them to take care of you first. We hear so many hosts like their HVAC goes down and they're new to a city and they're trying to scurry mm -hmm. to get someone out. And it's like, they're paying attention to all their other clients first. So that's what's great about this preventative maintenance too, is you already have those relationships with those companies. Let us know in the comments below, what is like your aha moment? Like, oh my goodness, I need to check that today. Let us know so we can keep you accountable. And since you're already on the roll of watching nitty gritty content about how to care for your property, we got another video lined up for you. We've got how to clean your Airbnb and also how to inspect your Airbnb to make sure it's perfect for that guest stay. With that, I'm Sarah Karakayan. I'm Annette Grant and together we are. Thanks, thanks for, for visiting. visiting.